All right, so now we know what we can do in the digital model. We're going to get back to our focus question of where do these energy storage molecules come from in the first place? They're obviously not being made enough in our biodome, but why? Where do they come from and what is happening? To do this, we are going to start paying attention to the movement of these energy storage molecules in our model ecosystem. In a moment, I'm going to show you a table that you should jot down in your notebook or that you might have available to you on a Schoology lesson or a handout to track the information and observations that you are seeing in the digital model. So as we know, our goal is to understand a little bit more about where these energy storage molecules are coming from. So something that you might want to keep track of is whether that specific group contains energy storage molecules or not. It also will be good to look at whether energy storage molecules flow in or go in to that group, or whether energy storage molecules are flowing out. Let's go ahead and get into the digital model to make these observations. All right, so here we are in the matter and energy in ecosystems digital model. And as we can see, we have these different things that we can do. Uh, but right now, our focus is just trying to understand where these energy storage molecules come from. So I'm not going to mess with any of these things. I'm just going to go ahead and click play. Hopefully you have your table somehow in front of you so that you are able to take down observations as we look at the digital model together. So right away, I know I'm looking for those energy storage molecules. And if I'm looking at my table of what things contain these energy storage molecules, I can see right away that everything in the biotic matter contains these energy storage molecules. So that might be why the dead matter is considered to be biotic matter, even though it is no longer living. I see, though, that in the abiotic matter, there is actually no energy storage molecules. I don't see any of those orange kind of disks in this abiotic matter. So in my, in my table, I would want to go ahead and record that information. The next thing that we were trying to understand was where do we see energy storage molecules flowing in? And I can see in the consumers, they're flowing in, it looks like, in this little tube, right? And obviously, this is just a, a model of how this works. But they are flowing in or being consumed by the consumers. I also see by the secondary consumers. And also, if we take a look, um, I see that it seems like when you kill, okay, yep. So when these things are dying, it looks like that energy storage molecule gets put into the dead matter. I see it is also going in to the decomposers. I don't see any energy storage molecules flowing into the abiotic matter, which makes sense because there's no energy storage molecules in there. But I don't actually see ener energy storage molecules flowing into the producers. If we take a look at the, the input of the producers, it's actually carbon dioxide which is flowing in. So the producers have energy storage molecules inside of them, but I don't see it flowing in, which is interesting. I do see for our last column in the table that it seems like there's an output from almost everything, again, except from that abiotic matter because it doesn't contain those energy storage molecules to begin with. So all of the biotic matter contains energy storage molecules. All of them output energy storage molecules. But it looks like that the producers are kind of special because they have no input. So this is really key. It seems like the producers seem to be where the energy storage molecules are appearing or coming into the ecosystem. They did not have energy storage molecules going in, yet somehow that group still had energy storage molecules 
inside. So that really seems like that is where our story might be, um, where we need to look more closely at. And we also can see in the model that there are kind of plants and grasses kind of representing these producers. So the producers are things like plants and grass and, and algae and other things like that. Um, and so we are going to go ahead now and think about, well, how are these energy storage molecules getting there? 